right, y'all. So in this one, we have a huge well in the VV and Omi community, and he's going to be talking about his experience with Bitforex and how he sold his XRP to jump back into Omi and basically what he's investing in on VV and his his points of view and perspective on everything going on right now. So I'm actually interested in hearing what he has to say. I know that he's very analytical. We have a history of being invested in the same things. I know he started off in um, Cardano, same same place I started off. Then he sold also, um, and we got into Omi and VV. And then we both exited and or took some out and went to XRP. And, you know, it, it, we make a lot of similar moves. So I, I definitely have a lot of respect for my man's packs. But, yeah, we're going um, we to jump into it, see what's actually going on. And, yeah, get... See what's happening with one of the biggest whales in the community and see if he's still a whale or if he's a former whale and he's sold and he's done with the project. So let's find out. Um, yeah, drop that thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. And shout out to Randy for having him and, and holding these great conversations as always, man. Uh, and once again, listen, I, I have no hate or anything against anyone. I, I have nothing but love for Randy, bro. Even if, even if I disagree with some things i don't judge him at all I, I i would not it's not a decision that i would make and i also will always warn people you know to to make sure you don't overdo it and try trying to copy anyone else but at the end of the day any grown man can do whatever they want to do that ain't got nothing to do with me but yeah just make sure you all are safely investing but anyway let's jump into this i got back into omi you know, I did well on my XRP, bro. And I told people to get it. And this was this was before the, you know, all the SEC stuff. But it was right before that. And I, and I, uh, I, I uh, you know, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm kind of, oh, you're going to G? Yeah. I, you, I kind of got, um, I was just in a position where I was like, you know what? I got extra money, you know, Omi's down. I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to, I listen, I'm, I, I got in, and you know, five, seven, six, three, you know, range, five, seven range. I'm, I'm like, let me just do it. You know, I, I got in a uh, December, um, between the 10th and the 14th of, uh, of December. And, um, I, I, I just felt, let me just get back in. Why not? You know, you never know. I'm like, it probably ain't going to go that much lower. Maybe this could be a, a close to bottom. If not bottom, I thought it would go lower. And to this day, I still think it there's whatever, but maybe not. I don't know. And um, I sent that to I got it to a bit forex. I mean, it's just the way that's that's, you know, what I'm saying that that's why I've always done it. I did it through there. I mean, I think I did it through gate and then I sent it over. But bit forex was it's easy. You know what I mean? It's got a great um, exchange and the transfer is easy. So what the hell? Yes, I did see it on Coinbase wallet. Yes, I have seen it on there. But I, I don't I don't know how to there's Ethan stuff. There's a lot of shit that you got to do. And it, it's it's kind of like, you know, and, and I don't really know who controls it because I've seen some disclaimers. It's just different. It's, it's different. I know once you done got used to Bit4x, it's an annoyance having to get used to something different. But I, I found I found Coinbase actually a lot simpler in, in my experience. Um, and then you could just send it straight to um, send it straight to where you got to send it to your wallet, um, and you're good. Like so, it's yeah. I found I found it to be a pretty good experience. Um, the fees the fees are feeing. But yeah, I mean, besides that, yeah, it wasn't bad for me. Where's that Coinbase is not really affiliated or affiliated, but it's not. It's like a, it's like a weird kind of like exchange. I don't know what the hell that is. So I just didn't want to, you know what I'm, I'm don't fix something that ain't broke. So I've done Bitforex, how long? And I just left it yeah, there. Yeah, it's been years. You know, I know, I know in comparison to like Celsius and FTX and a couple of the other ones, you know, there was, there was, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, leveraging on customers' accounts to port uh, to uh to, to purchase other coins and and because the market went down and there was liquidations it compromised a, account you know a, a customers accounts this is not that case this is bitforex just in a regulation issue based on licensing this isn't like the ceo of bitforex was was uh you know uh took a, a 10x uh long on on something and borrowed all our our uh you know uh, asset and and it went down and now now you know he jumped ship. That's not the case. This is something different. They've had they've actually acquired licenses in other countries. I just don't know why not in the country that you're you're in. I mean you're in Hong Kong. Don't you have a license? That I don't understand. And they have an SFC, 
like we have an SEC. So I don't, I don't know what happened. It's still, nobody can get any information. I got circles that actually in Hong Kong, actually a lawyer. I mean, we, we, me and my wife, we, um, uh, uh, my wife had sold a, 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 a townhome to a woman that her son was in college out here in the States. And, and, uh, and, and, you know, they bought a, a townhome. They came and visited. We were like a property manager for the time being. And then he came home from school and he took it over and they went back to Hong Kong. We saw communication. So I kind of just kind of pulled, you know, some information. They, they, there's nothing, they can't get no information. They can't, they, they, they did their phone calls and they're both lawyers, the husband and wife. They can't, they can't knock it. So I don't know who the hell, there's no one to call. I just got to wait, I guess. I don't know. Are you in the Telegram group? No, I'm not. All right. So they've found some information where it seems like their offices, not just in Hong Kong, but they have an office in like Canada. Uh, they're, they're like gone, like they've gone with the wind, like a fly. Like, bo like boiler room gone. Yeah. Uh, and then they also had a, there's a rumor going around that the team was arrested, like the team that they could get anyway. And then there was a, I actually just got this news that they was a, uh, so Garrett, who is the former CFO of BitForex, people were like going and, and trying to message him on Telegram. And then today there was someone said, please understand that Garrett cannot answer specific questions regarding BitForex. The questions will be answered once the authorities have released their report. So if that's the, you know, if that's true, then then the team was arrested. And then they, someone probably told Garrett to say that, or Garrett told that person to say that. Um, which if this is, I mean, people will get some of their funds back hopefully a high percentage but it would be what the funds on there were worth at the time and if this is like a big investigation this this could take well over a year this is like one to two years it could be um that being said if, if it if they decide to go and they have to liquidate some of their stuff to get that to their creditors uh they probably could get 100 percent back because only will be really high at that point um so there's a chance that everyone gets. I like the conviction. Omi will be high. Let's hope. But yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know all this information about that, man. Like that's 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 insane. They just up and vanishing. Man, I don't, I don't know. I mean, this looked like another rug pull to me. But man, what they had at the time. Um, but it just won't be like, oh, hey, here's your Omi, and they just give it back to you. That would be great if they could do that, but uh, what would have an FTX that that hadn't been the case? So unless they change that, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I, I it was fifty, it was fifty k, bro. It was like fifty k for me, and uh, and honestly, uh, w like considering you know having, I don't had fucking like seven, eight hundred thousand at one. I don't. You were up there. You were like, did you crack a million? I, I we were, you know, yeah, we, were, I, we were rolling, yeah, bro. We were rolling. I was taking. Yeah. Like 40 or 50 no grand. I was buying gem 40, 50 thousand dollars worth of gems. Like it was like nothing. <laughs> yeah, it didn't matter. You... Like whatever. Here, take the Omi. Go ahead. Yeah. Give me the, you know, I mean, we were doing shit, you know, that I mean yeah. technically wasn't right, but we were just doing it. I mean, off off. My man is just like coming straight out with it, you know. We 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 the criminals over here. Nah. <laughs> nah, let me stop. But yeah, hey, they 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 talking this big money talk right now. That that's that's uh, unrelatable to me. But I mean, hey, it'd be like that, man. I mean, <laughs> so I guess this this 50K loss is not really much to you. But, I mean, it's it sucks still. I mean, that's still a lot of money. Like, that's still a lot that you could actually have made some profits with. So I know that that sucks. But, yeah. Uh, Off-app transactions. But we had transfer at the time. There was a lot of shit happening. It was really kind of like a, a Wild West. Yeah, but at the time, the I'm just making a point. Can you imagine? The value that we have, I'm just saying, and now, you know, this happens. I got people, I got people over here that I had referred uh, Bitforex to them. They were just newbies and they wanted to get some OMI and they were like, yeah. And I was just like, yeah, you know what I mean? And now this, they got verified and all that. They were like all feeling good. Now it's like, I feel stupid. I feel bad, you know? So the things that you've been selling, is it to replenish that OMI? Is to have some dry powder on the side? That's nope. That's a good one. No, I'm I'm all I'm all in. I, I'm I'm stacking I'm stacking three coins. I'm not going to say which ones. Obviously, XRP is one. I'm not going to say the other two. Okay. And um, and uh, it's not Ethan. It's not Bit. And I can tell you right now what I'm loading. I'm just loading. That's it. Okay. Cool beans. Uh, you know, right now, I'm not I'm not right at the moment. Right, right, right at the moment now. 
not going to stack because I, we're in a pop and is this pop's going to fizzle, but, um, we're, you know, it, anything, anything that you get in, in, a a, a pre having up to the having is, is, is usually gold. I mean, it's just a, it's just a gold thing. I mean, like I said, uh, without mentioning macros and black swans and everything else, everything being the same and everything good and we're good to go. I mean, you got to realize something um, with the having, you know, people realize, oh yeah, you know, because you know, it's, there's just something that happens when it comes to Bitcoin, right? You have, you have miners and they have to make money because they're, they're obviously spending the money on this obviously the uh, utility and the equipment. Yeah. And unfortunately, because they're not getting, it works against them because they're not getting as many Bitcoin. You understand? They, the have has to, they have, it has to work harder and it, it's, it, they it have to get better equipment and the better equipment costs more money. And it just, it's just on and on and on. So it, if, if, if Bitcoin doesn't um, uh, stack up to the expectation of a higher number to make up for that, you know, it's like reverse splits and forward splits. It's like, you know, it's like, it's doing a, uh, uh, it's doing yeah, a, it's a what would be, what would be a forward split, but they would cut the price in half. That's what a halving is. It's yeah. a forward split, a two for one. It's always a two for one every four years, it's like a two for one forward split. But the only difference is that the price has to double, go double, it has to double that last split to equal yeah. out what it was getting one to one. Otherwise it's, it's a loss. And that's yeah. the key. It, it, it keeps coming down and, and there's people in, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, I know, you know, we talk about whales and we talk about Omi and we talk about, you know, just the industry and shit, but you know, I don't, I don't, where is, where is um your Omi? Where do you have yours? You have it in one spot? No, I'm, oh, I mean, it, mostly, I mean, it's mostly on, mostly on trust wallets. So if you want to be saying like one particular thing, like I don't have one ledger, one Trezor, one trust wallet. I have like five different trust wallets and I have the VV app. Uh, mm -hmm. And the, I mean, that I, I wouldn't have it anywhere on any exchange. I don't even have, have it on a MetaMask um, just because the MetaMask a lot of times is connected to stuff. Uh, Trezors or ledgers are probably the safest, but the trust wallets really have never really let me down. They're on different devices. So it's... Mm -hmm. I feel like that's as long as they're on a device that's not connected to anything and it's not, not even connected to Wi-Fi, that's fine. What uh, about v, what about on Vivi? Is there a max that you could put on it? Uh you can put on as much as you want. Uh I think there's one person I know that has like a hundred million on there, hundred six million. Uh I don't have nearly that much, but it's uh like when I when I was buying, like so right now you can't do it anymore because nobody's really selling down here, but um I, I bought a decent amount last year. Of people that were that were selling and i bought it at triple zero six triple zero seven whatever it was and um so so the, all of that's on the vv app because i was just getting it off their app because uh and it was like right around the time that we they said oh if you have vv or omi on the vv app you get the staking for mcp points and now obviously we're doing for bronze tickets as well i mean that's one thing i will say about randy i don't really get involved in all the hate trains and stuff going against people but he really has conviction. He has a lot of conviction towards the project. And I respect that. Because people say that, oh, Randy's trying to get people to be his exit liquidity. But realistically, he's the most people's exit liquidity that I know. Like, he'd he be exit liquidity for everybody. So, why, it don't even really make sense, the argument that he's looking to get people to be his exit liquidity when he keeps digging deeper and being other people's exit liquidity because he believes in the project. Like he really just has this level of conviction towards it. And I mean, Hey, that's re That's respectable. That's, that's definitely respectable. Having conviction like that. Uh, I don't see how you get there, but I believe in the project, but not to the extent where I would put everything into it anymore. Like, nope, no, no. Foster's been hinting at something to be released soon. Do you have any thoughts about that? Well, I'm not, like I said, I'm not in any telegram groups. I really don't really care to be in them. Um, I have really no time to do that anyway, but I know there's things that swirl around circles of VV circles. We'll call it um, some stuff I'm privy to some stuff, ah. but no matter what, it's just like, it doesn't matter what information that I hear 
um, it, it's, it's, it, it, I'm not, I, you can't go and tell people about it because if it doesn't come true, you look like a liar. And, it, and if it comes true, then you, then you just look like a, a, a rat. So either way, it's wrong. You're, 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 you're not, you don't look good, you know? So for me, I just take it on the chin. I don't really care too much. Um, it really sucks because I'm like, I'm like low in inventory on Vivi. Like now I'm getting even lower and, um, I got no Omi. It's like, it's like crazy. I mean, yeah. and, um, want so I, I don't, I don't, I listen, I'm, I'm still like, you know, when you're in the community for so long and you're so bullish and you feel things good and you're always good. And then, you know, then you get, I don't want to say rug pulled, but think this, this, I don't know. I, I, mean, I, I, I don't, I have a lot of opinion about it. I don't want to say it like publicly like this, but, um, everybody's like, Hey, what's your fault? You know, you, you know, you can't blame anybody else. Listen, I feel the same way. If you get hacked, uh, you you have a bank account and you get hacked. What are you going to say? Oh, well you could, you could have different, had a different bank. Yeah, I know. Anything could happen. Well, but for me, when you're in a community and every, I mean, let me ask you a question. What happens? Mm -hmm. You said there was, uh, I think it was the notion of 22 or so billion only on, um, uh, yes. Forex. All right. So how, what happens with that now? Let's just say it doesn't go nowhere. Cause obviously it's just in an account. No one sold it. Right. Yeah. So Correct. What happens to it if it never is recovered or or it should get no. recovered ultimately, even if it takes two years? What happens? Yeah. So right now, all funds are frozen while the police do their investigation. However long that takes, eventually what they'll have to do is they'll take the whatever's in the account and they'll start selling it off to pay off the creditors, which are essentially the, the people that, that had funds on there. Um, so that'll get, I don't know if that's at auction or if that's at, like if they just dump it on the market, it would likely to start off at auction. Um, like when the government goes and they see something from like Silk Road and then they sell the Bitcoin, it's, it's at auction. It's never, it's never dumped. Uh, so I, either one of those two things will happen. And also if they dump 22 billion, that's going to be a huge red candle. They're not going to get as much as they would if they were just do a slow Vesetti, but, but eventually that, that will be sold off unless the, un unless they just go and they just say like, heck it. And they just, like if I can't have it, nobody can, and then the keys are gone, and then you know nobody knows what that is. But but most likely that's, that's point, what I that's what I was that that's why I'm insinuating, and that's why I'm quite I'm questioning it because um, it's like if it's gone, then is it like it it's burned? If, I mean, yeah, is if it, nobody has the keys, saying? then yeah, then, then that is burned. I mean, think about think about apparently I think there was three or so three. I think there is. You could look at the from uh, history. I think this noted. I think about three million Bitcoin are gone from the loss of uh, accounts and past. Bro, <laughs> yo, hey, <laughs> I got this comment on one of my videos, bro. It was sad, but it was hilarious, bro. My man said, "Finally, all this time I've been waiting for a big burn, <laughs> big burn of it." <laughs> and it had to be big forex, so my Omi is involved in it. <laughs> my man's finally got a big burn event, and he lost his Omi from it. Like it's crazy, bro. But it was just funny. My man still had a sense of humor even through this dark moment, bro. This is it sucks, man. It definitely sucks. But yeah, that one made me laugh a little bit. Passwords. Jesus, so much. So that means there's 18 million and arguably there's 3 million still left. So arguably there's only 15 million mined and 3 million is the max that could ever get, you know, mined and the other three are gone. So that's what I'm saying. Is 22 billion gone ultimately? That's insane. I, at the very least, it's locked up. I would consider it staked for right now for at least a year. I, but yeah, that supply crunch is, is, is very big. That's not insignificant. So when you have the amount of people, like Americans right now, if you want to go and buy now, granted the, the gas fees and the, the, the Coinbase fee where you have to go and you, you swap on Coinbase wallet, that's relatively the same, whether you buy a couple hundred dollars or a couple thousand dollars, but, but the gas fees have been going up. Uh, if you remember last, last bull market it was like five, $700 sometimes for gas fees in this bull market, especially after the Ethereum ETFs get passed late in, in May, you might, you might see like thousand dollar gas fees. That's, now, insane. That's insane. That's insane. It's going to, it's going to be more, to, it's going to be more than the actual transaction. It's going to make no sense to trade. Yeah. So uh, right now, Americans, like they can either try to find someone to buy OTC. I have somebody that some of my whales are buying from it's a small amount. It's like 30 million, but they're buying. I know you, you, you questioned me about that. I remember you texting me if I want, if I had access, you, if I did. Yeah. Cause they have like, 
That's, this this would be a good business opportunity, to be honest, for a whale. One of y'all whales, listen, I want to cut if you do it. But if a whale goes right now and not his own stash of Omi, but just goes and buys up a business stash of Omi and then starts to sell to people, is that legal? I mean, it, it should be legal. You're selling your Omi to people. It's not. It would technically be just be his stash that he got for the sole purpose of selling it to people. Throw a little fee on there that's not a thousand dollars, and boom! During the bull run, if they don't put it on exchanges, you are the exchange. You know, perfect. But yeah, it won't be any price movement from that though. But yeah, the end of this week, they'll have like three to four hundred grand, and they're you know going to chuck that in Omi, but that's going to pump. Where, where the do they? Where do they buy? Where do they buy though? Are they going to get it through like Coinbase Wallet? Like how do you? They, they have to. I mean, either that, or we'd have to go and send funds to somebody in Europe or Canada and they could buy it on Gate.io or they could buy it on Ascendex. And, and even then they'd have to just buy the sell orders. You know, there's so little liquidity down here. It, That's what it, I'm it, saying. So you're, you're going to, you're going to, I mean, even if it's even just say hundreds of thousands per, and you only have like maybe see 20 or 30 of them, you can't, you need to get like fucking eight, seven, eight million max before you start green candle and things that are going to make it, you know, people yeah. just name their price then at that point. But, but so, I mean, at this point, what they're going to have to do is like, okay, hey, uh, I'll give them the two options. You either go and and buy it here at double zero nine eight, and and it's going to pump to double zero one five or double zero two, and and you might have X amount of weeks to do that. Or, you know, Vivi Nakomi can announce anything in an instant. They have South by Southwest that they're presenting with Marvel that could cause people to FOMO. You had Foster or you had Akomi go and and retweet like, hey, we have Omega NFT coming. We have uh, Omega Bronze ticket coming. And then you have two weeks ago, the BitGet exchange got about $80,000 worth of OMI, which is about what they need in order to go and, and list a tier one listing. To be fair, last I heard, BitGet was an unregistered exchange too. Somebody got some information on that? Because, I mean, getting into Bit, getting into, yeah, BitForex 2.0 is crazy. It, that, that would be wild. I mean, can we do some research on this, please? from a wallet that had 30 billion OMI, which sounds like the Akomi business development wallet, but they just haven't officially announced it yet. And a lot of people are ignoring that. So they could go and they announce, hey, we got big, we got a new exchange. Well, and, that, and that'll, add, that'll add to liquidity, but it's still it's still a matter of, you know, demand, no matter how you look at it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, and there's a lot to come. So I, I'm telling my guys, it's probably best we buy it in the close triple zeros or even double zero one. It doesn't matter if we pump it 50%. Double zero one five, or even double it in the next in the next like six to eight months. I feel like we're getting back to all time highs. Um, so th six to eight month all time highs, bro. I think this is gonna take six to eight months for VV to freaking update the search search bar. Now nah, let me stop. But I mean, I don't think I don't I don't know I don't know. I mean, I just know what the crypto space is doing, but I just don't. I don't have any faith that this team is this competent. Where we gonna see some? Some major movement, but there we have it, yo. We'll end it here. Um, let me know what you all think in the comment section down below. Once again, shout out to Randy, great job, great interview. Um, shout out to Mr. Pax. Hopefully, your other investments go well, homie. Um, hopefully, you get a little bit of Omi, get back in there a little bit, you know, just a little bit, you know, a little bit, like not not too too much, but a little bit. But yeah, um, there we have it, y'all. I'm gonna catch y'all on the next one. Peace out, fam.